What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller, here with a very bad toupee day. I was wearing a baseball cap earlier when I was going to get coffee, but uh, hair's looking wild. My beard looking a little less filthy, so you know, we're moving in the right direction step by step. But I got a very interesting live stream question the other day. It was about older G-Shocks and if they still hold up in 2020. Um, very, very interesting. Let's go ahead and explore that a little bit further in today's episode. It's 1.37 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, are older G-Shocks still good in 2020? Well, I think first to answer this question, we need to define what an older G-Shock is. And this person that asked me the question, I think they were referring to the DW5600 line, but the thing is, those are still being made nowadays in pretty large quantities, and uh, there's a bunch of really like modern iterations of the DW5600, but the one on my wrist is the one I'd actually really like to talk about, which is the DW6600. Now this G-Shock is actually not made anymore. It's circa 1990 production and uh, easily one of my favorites, but by today's standard, you know, it's an older G-Shock. So do I think the DW6600 still holds up in 2020? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think older G-Shocks are amazing in 2020. I'd go as far as to say the older G-Shocks are better than the modern ones. Uh, very controversial. Let me explain why. Number one, uh, these older G-Shocks, especially the DW6600, have an incredibly intuitive button layout. Now, that may seem like kind of a silly thing to talk about, but come on, the buttons are what you press every day. I push your buttons every day. You know, the comment section, you guys hate me. No, but seriously, when it comes to pushing buttons, I mean, the, the light button is right here. It's the biggest button on the watch. Let's do a little drinking game. Every time I say button, you, you guys are gonna get messed up. Button, 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 emergency room. No, but seriously, I have very fond memories. Uh, I stole this watch from my dad, like sometime in the 90s, and uh, I would always play with this backlight button because specifically this DW6600 has a very cool kind of animation, and then uh, that red G that kind of pops up there in the background. It's very satisfying, and again, um, if it is a low light situation when I'm fumbling around in the back of my Jeep or something when we're going camping, I know the light button is just right here here, boom, I press it, and uh, yeah, it turns on. And then again, uh, we have the adjust button that you would use to typically set the time. We have the mode button that you go scroll, scroll excuse me, through the various modes. You have the split reset and the start stop. Very simple, which brings me to my next reason why these older G-Shocks are better than the new ones. Incredible simplicity. Okay, so the DW5600s, the DW6600s, they don't have GPS, they don't have compasses. Uh, this one isn't even solar powered, no barometers, it doesn't hook up to my phone, nothing fancy schmancy or newfangled. But you know what it does have? Everything I need. Guys, I'm gonna be honest, I've reviewed a lot of really cool high-tech G-Shocks on this channel, and uh, you know, the GBDH1001, uh, really cool G-Shock, I wear that most days of the week, especially, um, you know, all the gyms are closed down again in Los Angeles, so I'm doing a lot of running still, I'm messing around with my sandbags, uh, have some weight vests and everything at home that I'm working out with. Uh, so while we're doing these home workouts and these different kind of workouts, that GBDH1001, the fact that it can track my run and my heart rate and everything, that's very helpful, it has a step counter I enjoy that, but nine times out of 10 when I'm reaching for a G-Shock, all I need is a chronograph function, a backlight, some durability, and a decent water resistance rating. I'm not really using world time all that much. I'm not often using GPS or compass or barometer. Do I enjoy having those things? Absolutely, it's really fun. When we go somewhere uh, that I can use those, those functions, yeah, I love it. But again, nine times out of 10, I'm just timing myself on a break or something. It's, it's not that complicated, no pun intended. Talking about watch complications, whatever. Well, let's face it, guys. This DW6600, it kind of is my go-to travel companion, my vacation watch. This thing has been with me in pools, jacuzzis, oceans, deserts, 
even, you know, snowy tundras of New England. This has literally been through it all, and it is perfectly fine. Sure, the resin case is pretty scratched up. The crystal is actually looking pretty clean. There are a few scratches, uh, but all in all, the only thing that's ever really gone wrong with this watch is the resin rot on the strap, but I've replaced the strap with this NATO strap. If you wanna find out uh, how I did this, click up here, because um, that was probably the best upgrade I've ever done to this watch. But let me get back to the list, okay? Because there's another reason I think these older G-Shocks are better than the new ones. And uh, this is a bit subjective, okay? But uh, objectively speaking, actually, you know what? I'm gonna amend that. Objectively speaking, these older G-Shocks are like a lot less weird looking than some of these modern ones. I love my Mudmaster, okay? The Mudmaster is like the toughest watch I own. It is so badass. It does a lot of really cool things. Uh, I've worn it when we went up to the Sequoias, uh, the National Park, we saw that huge elevation. It was really fun to have uh, my altimeter and my barometer and my temperature, uh, my thermometer, <laughs> my temperature. Nowadays, we're taking our temperatures a lot with that. I have that infrared gun, try to come into the office. I'm like, nope. Dee -dee. It's like I'm scanning people. I'm judging your value. I should make a movie about that where you can like scan people. Everyone has like a barcode and like you can judge people's like status based upon their value. And like it gets really dark, but then there's one character who is not born with a barcode or the barcode wouldn't scan properly. And so everyone judges him and thinks that there's something wrong with him, but he's the protagonist and he rises up and he shows that fictional society that they are actually the ones that are wrong. And it's really uplifting. And it's an anime and all the girls got big anime. Wow. It's the best part of anime, guys, come on. Where, uh, where was I? Because <laughs> I have no idea where I was. <laughs> I'm serious, I have no idea where I was. Oh, I lost my train of thought, but what I was getting at is uh, these older G-Shocks are not as weird looking as these newer ones. I was saying that my Mudmaster is really cool and has a lot of really cool functions, but it is it is a weird, chunky looking watch. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna be real with you. It's a really fun, cool watch. Looks really weird. But this DW6600, and especially the DW5600 series, uh, they kind of just look like digital watches. Maybe a bit beefier cases, but all in all, it's not too obtrusive on the wrist. And again, it just kind of looks like an old school digital watch. These newer ones, and some like of the MRGs or the, the, the G Steel watches, that's just bleh, bleh. My next reason as to why these older G-Shocks are just a bunch better than the newer ones, uh, perfect legibility, okay? I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, when we look at the screen on this DW6600, let's see, we got day, we got date, uh, we got the time, of course. Uh, we have this little animation going through the middle, uh, that's kind of the running seconds, and then we have AM or PM, that's about it. There's no negative display, okay? I can read this very simply, whether it's dim out or it's bright out. I don't have to move the screen a certain way to uh, see the display. And this watch has probably the best backlights out of any G-Shock I currently own. I'm not kidding, again, that big button, boom. Huge, immense, it's like, it's like, Almost a little, oh my God, it's almost like a little too bright. And my final reason as to why I think these uh, older G-Shocks are a bit better than the newer ones is battery life. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you. This is going to get me a little bit of backlash because I have a feeling people will not believe me. And this is a bit anecdotal. This watch, okay, it's from the 1990s. I am 100% positive. I have never changed the battery of this watch. It, sh it shouldn't be possible, I understand that. I've worn this watch a whole lot. I've had it for like 30 years almost. Like it's like practically a 30 year old watch. Um, and I've, I am positive I've never replaced the battery on it. And it is still working with all its functions. I don't know how that is. Maybe like we need to get like NASA or something to, I don't know why I said NASA, but some organization to study the battery on this watch. It's just, it, it doesn't have very many functions, okay? And a lot of these old, these older G-Shocks don't have, you know, GPS and a barometer and altimeter and thermometer and this and that and heart rate. So there's not a whole lot to kind of drain the battery. And if this anecdotal expression is anything to go by, uh, that's a pretty long battery life. Um, I think uh, I've read online that typically 
it's anywhere for, from two to 15 years. And somehow my watch has doubled that. So I'm not saying I'm cooler than you. I'm, I'm pretty cool though. So in conclusion, do I love my modern G-Shocks, my Mudmaster, my King G-Shock GX56 BB1, uh, my GBDH1001, special thanks to G-Shock for sponsoring me and sending me that watch. Uh, do I love those? Yeah, absolutely, they're really cool. But out of all my G-Shocks, which one do I wear the most? DW6600, I think this was their peak. Everything else they've made after this is kind of just icing on the cake. I still need a Neo Tokyo. Uh, if someone wants to send me a Neo Tokyo, I have a PO box. Maybe just be a cool guy, give me one. That'd be really dope. Um, yeah, still need a Neo Tokyo, so I'm not asking for it, but but you could send me one and I would. But guys, as always, this was kind of a, just a, a fun little episode. I wanna hear from you though. What do you think about the older G-Shocks versus the new ones? Objectively speaking, the older ones do look quite a bit different than these modern iterations. They're trying new things, they got more functions, they gotta be a bit bigger because of the sensors they're putting into the watches, I get it. But please, let me know, what do you think? Older G-Shocks, newer G-Shocks, do these old ones from the 90s still hold up in 2020? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave me the comment section. Leave me a comment in the comment section and I will see you there. And if you're new here and you enjoyed this episode, if you learned something new somehow, if you had a chuckle, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a bunch and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the content we're doing here. We do six pieces of content a week six a week if you're a channel member uh four dollars 99 cents a month it's kind of like youtube's patreon you become a certified t3 bot you get six pieces of content a week and you get access to the members only discord channel we talk about photography watches food weightlifting cars stock market even we have a whole lot of fun really diverse group of guys and uh, we all come together because of the love of watches and we'd love to see you there. So again, click that join button next to the subscribe button and uh, this channel gets the vast majority of support from people like you. So thank you so much. Easiest way to support the channel, just watch the videos. Bada bing, bada boom. Simple as that. Thank you, I dabbed on camera. Check out all the links in the description below. Check out my personal website, www.thetimetellershop.com. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. And for those of you who don't know, I literally dab at the end of every one of my episodes, but this time I'm not going to. I already did, I don't even have to, it's crazy. I just, I just made it easier for myself. That was a good episode. Now I can use my real voice. I don't have to use that fake Hey, I'm Jory Goodman. Voice. I can just use my real voice.